the Protestant Reformation of the 16th century was one of the most important events in history, splitting Western Europe into two blocks that would fight each other for a century, causing devastation on a cataclysmic scale and influencing the worldwide religious and political landscape in ways we still live with today. However, Martin Luther wasn't the first thinker that denounced some of the founding principles of the Catholic Church, nor was the Protestant Reformation the first time that the fires of religious war had engulfed Europe. In this video, we will take a look at a number of the heretical sects and breakaway churches of the Middle Ages, the impact they had on European history, and the influence they would have on the early modern Protestant Revolution. And we'll also highlight another split that came later, the departure of Christian groups from Europe to establish colonies in the Americas. This is the beginning of a famous time of killings and distrust, covered by today's sponsor Magellan TV in their documentary Witch Hunt in Salem. While many have heard of these dark times so close to the beginning of American history, there is plenty more to be said, and this documentary reveals it all starkly. The most interesting part is to learn how the strict beliefs of the Puritans, the ideology they fled persecution of in Europe to protect, rendered them vulnerable to social breakdown, being not only very wary of witchcraft, but perhaps also more likely to partake in it. Within a generation or two, they had turned the religious fervor that drove them to those shores to the business of killing their own in the hunt for evil forces, driven by all manner of misconceptions, which this documentary will explain. Alternatively, another look at the intersection of religious and political conflicts can be seen in Promises and Betrayals, a documentary that gives a brutally honest report on the role of the British Empire in stoking the fight between Jews and Arabs in the Middle East by attempting to manipulate both sides and ultimately failing, revealed through uncovered government communications. Another great watch on the topic of religious history. To get started with these documentaries, or anything else from their massive library of over 3,000 documentaries, all ad-free and with new titles added weekly, use our link in the description to get a free one-month trial of Magellan TV. Before Martin Luther affixed his 95 theses on the doors of the churches in Wittenberg in 1517, a number of Christian movements that criticized some of the dogmas or elements of the canonical rules of the Catholic Church had appeared in the previous centuries. Many of these were condemned as heresies by the popes, bishops, and ecclesiastical thinkers of their time. The word heresy comes from the Greek word heresis, meaning choice, and it is a belief or opinion that goes against the official doctrine of religion. Christianity was rocked by challenges to its orthodoxy from its infancy. As questions on the nature of Christ and the idea of the Trinity sparked discussions, division, and persecutions among Christians during the times of the Roman Empire. A number of heresies, such as Arianism, Gnosticism, and Donatism, sprawled up in these first centuries of the faith, with some even becoming the dominant form of Christianity in some areas of Europe and the Middle East. As such, it quickly became crucial for the heads of the church to define the doctrines of the faith to keep its unity. As Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire, Roman emperors like Constantine the Great actively engaged in uniforming the faith and condemning heresies in a number of church councils. As a result, schismatic movements challenging the Christian dogmas became associated with direct challenges to imperial power. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, various denominations and heresies of the Christian faith gradually disappeared in the territory that had been previously Roman, with the most prominent one, Arianism, dying out in Italy during the 7th century. After this, Western Europe was largely free of religious dissent for approximately three centuries. It was in the 10th century that political and social events laid the groundwork for the emergence of new movements. While Europe suffered from external raiders like Vikings and Magyars, and royal authority in its biggest kingdoms waned, the prestige of the church suffered greatly, both at the local level and in Rome. In the Eternal City, the local Roman aristocracy used the papacy to obtain power and influence in the Eternal City, with little regard for its spiritual role. Beyond Rome, the clergy was increasingly employed by kings and emperors to administer their realms as glorified politicians and landlords, which put into question the religious nature of their position. Moreover, local strongmen meddled heavily in the affairs of the church and seized its resources, 
and would install their favourites in local ecclesiastical positions by buying and selling these offices, thereby committing a mortal sin known as simony. This political anarchy and meddling laymen even encroached on the power structure of the most sacred cloisters in Christendom, the great monasteries of Europe. In response to this spiritual degradation, monks and their priors began reforming themselves and their codes of conduct to return to a more traditional monastic existence, focused on prayer and helping the poor, rather than the administration of the great riches that they had accrued in the past centuries through donations. These changes would inspire other movements with the goal of reforming the church, like the Peace of God campaigns which emerged in this period, particularly in southern France and Mediterranean cities. These were popular local manifestations of social and spiritual discontent, protesting against a clergy too influenced by the local nobility. These campaigns could spring up as grassroots movements, as was most likely, or could be encouraged by the local bishops, who would use them as a tool to assert their authority over the territory of their dioceses against the lesser nobility and unruly rural churches. The protest against a clergy too close to the nobility and obsessed with hoarding wealth was an element often present in most heresies which went against mainstream Catholic teachings. It was in this atmosphere that the Gregorian reforms took place, which revolutionized the role of the papacy in the Catholic world and dominated the relationship between the papacy and empire at the turn of the 11th and 12th centuries. At the same time, it was also in this period that the first forms of religious dissent emerged. The first episodes of heresy we find in the historical sources were sparse and sporadic, located in northern Italy and France in the first half of the 11th century. These early heresies seem to have been driven by a desire to live an extremely ascetic life free of abject poverty, perhaps inspired by the monastic reforms. Contemporary sources writing about them accuse them of being Manichaeans, indicating the possible influences from the Balkan Bogmalism sect, which we will explain later. Another movement that found condemnation among some Christian thinkers was the Patarius, which emerged in Milan and spread to Lombardy and Florence in the 1050s and 60s. Its goals were to reform the upper clergy of the city to be less ostentatious with their wealth and live more humbly, combating simony and marriage in the clergy in the process. However, there was an element of class struggle in the Pataria, for the movement could also be seen as a rebellion of smaller landowners against the upper class and the archbishop. In the 12th century, a wave of movements to reform the church emerged in Latin Europe. The reasons for this are manifold. The experiences of the previous century laid the groundwork for dissent. Many reforms had been introduced during the investiture controversy, a vicious power struggle between the Pope and Holy Roman Emperors of Central Europe. These had reinforced the church on a political level, but alienated some believers that wanted a clergy closer to the original message of Christianity. The Crusades had brought Western Europe into contact with the eastern half of the church and Islam, and returning pilgrims, traders and crusaders brought back with them new ideas. The foundation of universities, the appearance of traveling scholars, and the opening of translation centers where Greek and Roman philosophers were rediscovered contributed to the discovery and circulation of new ideas. However, the contribution of scholars should not be overstated, as these were, at their heart, popular and local movements of social and spiritual discontent. They emerged in the Mediterranean cities and usually revolved around a preacher who wandered with a small following. Many of these movements shared the idea that the true church was characterized by simple rituals and moral purity, expressed through an apostolic life consisting of minimal clothing, bare feet, donkeys as means of transportation, taking no money with oneself, and living in poverty. They would often reject the priests that had been educated in the city cathedral, whose life was too luxurious to be respectable, and many of the church's more recent reforms, which were considered superfluous. These wandering preachers were particularly successful in southern France, Flanders and Italy. The most influential ones were Peter the Monk in Le Mans, who combated prostitution in the city, Peter of Broye, who rejected baptism and mass, and Valdez of Lyon, the most successful of these, whose movement found its footing in France and northern Italy. Valdez's followers became known as Valdensians, or the Poor of Lyon. Valdez himself was a wealthy merchant, 
and began his spiritual journey in 1173, when he gave away all his possessions to the poor and started to preach a life of poverty, simplicity, and of good deeds. He had the Bible translated into French so he himself could read it, and tried to have his movement recognized by the Pope, but failed. In 1184, he and his followers were declared heretics. The Valdensians then sought refuge in the Alps, where they survive to this day. The most impactful and dogmatically most peculiar heresy that emerged during that time, however, was of a completely different vein, the Cathar heresy, from the Greek word kathari, meaning pure, also known as Albigensian, due to the town of Albi in southern France, which was one of its main strongholds. They were present in the Rhineland as early as the 1140s, though they might have already been present in Latin Europe for over a century before that. It is very likely that they were an offshoot of the Bogomil heresy which emerged in the Balkans in the 10th century. They were both Christian dualists, meaning they believed that there existed two gods, an evil one which had created the material world where the souls of men had been trapped, and a good god to which the souls belonged to. They rejected the Old Testament, and they did not see themselves as part of the Catholic Church, which they saw as corrupted by wealth and pomp a deviation from most other sectarian Christian movements, who wanted to reform the church from within rather than break from it entirely. The Cathars were well organized into dioceses with a clear succession rule for their bishops, which made them quite resilient to initial persecution. To achieve salvation, the Cathars had to live an extremely ascetic life, not eating animal products, remaining chaste, and otherwise refusing everything material to reach perfection. This lifestyle was seen as extremely virtuous and helped with the popularity of Catharism. The response of the church was initially quite mild, as it was more preoccupied with its rocky relationship with the Holy Roman Emperor and was relatively unconcerned with the Cathars. Catharism was condemned in 1179, but this did not stop it from finding a great number of followers in Lombardy and southern France, where the central authority of the French king was weaker making it extremely difficult to persecute them. In 1209, a crusade was called against the Cathars and those who supported them, which brought southern France under the direct control of the French kings. In 1233, the Inquisition was established to track down heretics, and by the middle of the 14th century, Catharism had practically died out in Western Europe. The medieval Inquisition was not, as might be commonly believed, a religious tribunal that condemned a great number of heretics to be burned at the stake. Instead, it was a number of regional commissions, staffed by theologians, whose goal was to find those guilty of heresy and recant their beliefs. They could not condemn heretics to death, because that required the cooperation of the local secular authority, and although they were allowed to torture those more stubborn, it seems to have been a rare occurrence. The majority of the cases ended with those found guilty repenting and converting back to the Catholic faith. One of the causes of the Cathars' disappearance was the establishment of new mendicant orders, in particular St. Francis's Order of Friar Minor and St. Dominic's Order of Friar Preacher. The latter had as their mission to combat heresy by training preachers to instruct others in Catholic doctrine, while St. Francis's Order's hallmarks were poverty and simplicity giving those who aspired for a more ascetic life a group to join within the framework of the Catholic Church, instead of going off and making their own sects. Following the death of St. Francis in 1226, the order abandoned its ideals of absolute poverty, which created a rift within the order between those who followed the reformer rules and those who desired to adhere to their founders' ideals. This latter group, called spirituals, became ever more uncompromising with their position until they were declared heretics in 1381, and they became known as the Fraticelli heresy. Other movements emerged in the 13th and 14th centuries, which were inspired by St. Francis's message of poverty and simplicity, like the Jochemites, Apostolic Brethren, and the Dulcinians, which were also deemed heretics. The next dissenting religious movement to shake the Christian world emerged in the academic halls of Oxford in the second half of the 14th century. There, the academic theologian John Wycliffe managed to inspire a popular movement that took the name Lollardy, deeply affecting English society and surviving until the Reformation arrived in England, where it influenced its development. 
Wycliffe criticized some abuses of the church, like the holding of multiple religious offices at the same time, and not being present where these offices had their seat. He also criticized some aspects of Catholicism, such as the devotion to saints, pilgrimage, and the authority of the Pope. When some of his followers were expelled from Oxford in 1382, they started to preach to the population with the use of a vernacular Bible translated into English. Their movement found initial success in the English political turmoil that had followed the death of Edward III during the Hundred Years' War. However, in 1401, the English Parliament made it mandatory to burn heretics at the stake, so many recanted their beliefs and Lollardy became clandestine and more extreme in its beliefs, although occasionally they would revolt against the monarch's authority, such as in 1414. Not only did Wycliffe's ideas have deep ramifications in his native England, its shockwaves also spread across the continent particularly through the ideas developed by rector of the University of Prague and Czech preacher Jan Hus. Hus was a firebrand who agreed with much of what the English academic wrote and criticized the abuses and pomp of the church and its priests, considering their wealth to be a betrayal of the values of the poorer and simpler church during Christianity's origin. He criticized the selling of indulgences, where one pays his church to save one's soul, and the idea that the church could be reformed by a series of councils of cardinals and theologians. Like many other heretical thinkers, Hus believed it was only what was written in the Bible that should be considered canonical for the church's doctrine. He also delivered his sermon exclusively in Czech, although many Germans had moved to the Bohemian capital, and thus joined in on the political and ethnic strife that was boiling in the Slav kingdom. His ideas brought him into conflict with Prague's episcopate, which managed to get him excommunicated. Hus went to Constance to appeal this decision at a general council, but was found guilty of being a heretic and burned at the stake in 1415. Jan Hus's death inflamed the nobles and population of Bohemia and Moravia, who took his burning as a national affront and began the Hussite wars that lasted until 1434. Many of the movements presented in our video would have a profound influence on the thinkers and reformers that began the Protestant Revolution. Ideas such as the translation of the Bible into vernacular languages to allow those not instructed in Latin to read and interpret the message themselves, the criticism of the selling of indulgences and priesthood, and the rejection of the authority of the Pope were all anchors upon which Martin Luther and his peers predicated their movement and had existed for centuries before their time. We're planning more videos on religious history in the future, so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button to see them. Please consider liking, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Our videos would be impossible without our kind patrons and YouTube channel members, whose ranks you can join via the links in the description to know our schedule, get early access to our videos, access our Discord and much more. This is the Kings and Generals channel and we will catch you on the next one.